I want to tell you a tale about diversity, about welcoming, about acceptance, and what it really takes to foster a truly diverse, diverse society. Uh, and to that, I wanted this band to come on board. Derek Schuler, thanks for joining us. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. So you run Ascent Classical Academies. What exactly is that? So that's a local Colorado-based network of classical charter schools, which are tuition-free public schools. Uh, we take a traditional approach to education. We don't selectively admit kids. Kids come in based on a blind lottery. And um, so, First of all, so you put together charter schools. Yes. And these, as you know, charter schools are government schools. Anyone can go to them, um, and you don't charge. The, but each one has a different philosophy. You know, some might be more arts-leaning, some might be more science-leaning, some might... And yours, I would put, as more literature-based, if that might be a good way to put it, that, you know, out of the reading, writing, arithmetic, art, um, uh, PE, pottery making, you know, yours is the only one where I think kids are reading Chaucer. And I got to say, that just scares me. So, well, I call it a pro-American uh, education, and we're a liberal arts program. So we do do literature and history, but we also do... Um, and do well in science and math and art and music. So we really, really take a broad approach in what we provide our kids. But the, when you say classical, what do you mean by classical? So we, this is probably the education that your grandparents had. Uh, our kids learned Latin. I hated my grandparents. Right? <laughs> they learned Latin. They, um, they read. They, they read. They learned Latin. Um, they, they, they read good books. They don't read a lot of modern fiction. They read, like you mentioned, Chaucer, the Odyssey, the Iliad, and a bunch of those. Um, so they, they might read Pride, Pride and Prejudice, Pride and Prejudice, and, and not uh, whatever the latest vampire uh, novel is. Not a lot of Harry Potter. Not a lot of Harry. All right. So I think about this, and I, boy, I don't want to go to a school like that. I, I wouldn't thrive because I can't read that well. But you <laughs> teach them how to read. You also do something that's pretty interesting, uh, that you believe that kids ought to have their own library of these classic books. So I remember when I got a book as a, as a kid, you know, I'd write in it and you'd give it back to the teacher. Your kids can keep some of these books. Yeah, that, that's an interesting thing about our school as well. We believe um, that as our students go through our program during kindergarten all the way up through high school, we want them when they finish to have a library of good things to take home. So when our students study and read a book, they mark it up, they take notes, they discuss it. And when they finish, they take it home and put it on their bookshelf and it remains with them forever. The first one of these uh, uh, schools you put up was in Jefferson County, Golden View Classical Academy. Tell me if I'm wrong on this. Um, there is a waiting list almost the size of the whole enrollment, isn't there? I mean, this people want into this school. Why? Yeah. So I um, so Golden View Classical Academy is in its fourth year this year. Again, this is just the type of education that's not available in mainstream public education these days. Uh, before Golden View, there wasn't any other good classical school in the Denver metro area. So, and I got involved in establishing Golden View for my own kids. My kids needed a place to go to school. Selfish me. Let's build a school for them, and now we have a school that serves By the way, that, 660 that's, kids. That's exactly how every charter school works. And parents want to get involved. They want a choice. They want something different, and they come up with, with something different. And these classical academies are a perfect example of mm -hmm. that. Uh, the success is incredible. One of the ladies who works at Independence, her kid goes there, and she's thriving. It has changed her life. It, 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 it's an amazing thing, and it's by choice. That is, your kid's not forced to go. Do you discriminate when you get these people on the waiting list? Well, I mentioned we do a blind lottery. So when kids apply to our school, we don't ask for any demographic information. We don't ask um, anything about their background, whether they require um, you know, anything special for special education or any accommodation. So all we want is a date of birth, a name, and an address. What if, what if a kid has severe autism or some other handicap that, will, um, that public schools have to take care of? Yeah, so typically on that, we do serve a wide range of needs. And there's a point where as charter schools, um, we're not really the, the group legally responsible for special education. So in a, exceptional cases, we do have to work with our authorizer. In Golden View's case, it's the Colorado um, Charter School Institute. And they, make a, they work with us to make a placement decision on kids that we're not equipped to make. 
but right. we do. So, for instance, for private, you know, if, if someone has mild autism or autism, you might be working with them. My son has severely handicapped. He has Down syndrome. He takes a lot of. Uh, I don't think I'd want him to go to your school. He's not going to learn to read. Chaucer is not the right choice. But I like the idea of having having that choice. Golden View came up. It was an instant success. People wanted in. People still want in. There's. You know, the same amount of kids you have, there's a waiting list. That amount, that is just mind-boggling to me. Then you repeated the success in Dugco. Tell me about that. So after Golden View had been up and running for about the second year, we had a number of parents coming from all over the Denver metro area. We had a large number coming from Douglas County. And they wanted us to work with them to establish another school in Douglas County. So we worked really hard, submitted an application down there, and got another K-12 charter school approved. And that was how Ascent was born out of, uh, out of Golden View Classical Academy. So we now have, uh, we're a network helping support parents and providing more education and more opportunities for their kids. Let's go to my backyard. There are parents that drive their kids from Boulder all the way down to Golden to get to this school. It's that, it's that successful. There's a, been a, a real effort to get this school in Boulder as well, to have the next one in the Boulder Valley School District, which is a huge school district. You went to the board, you put together your um, proposal, the same proposal that Golden or Jeffco did, the same proposal Dugco did, and what did they say? Before you answer that question, let me remind you, Boulder is the place that celebrates its diversity on its sleeve, puts out billboards about how welcoming they are. They want diversity. Given this opportunity for a little intellectual diversity, what did they say? Uh, initially, they said, we don't even want to talk to you. Um, we, we, we don't want to review your application, even though we had hundreds of kids already signed up interested in the school. Uh, we did, unfortunately, have to start off with an appeal to the State Board of Education. Came back. And for those people who don't know, if a local school board says no, you get to appeal it to the State Board of Education. The school district wouldn't even talk to you. We submitted an application and they said, thank you. We don't think this is a complete application, so we're not gonna review it and your application is denied. Again, like to your point, this was the same application we used to successfully start Golden View, which is now ranked the 10th highest school in the state. And the same application we used to start Douglas County. So, but Boulder wouldn't have anything, wouldn't have anything to do with it. And we uh, finally were able to get an order that they come to the table and review our they application. They were forced to review your ap application. The state said, no, 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 you have, to, you have to look at it. Now, Boulder wants diversity, but it has, a, well, how to put it, real diversity in its reading scores. This is, this is not a school district where underserved kids seem to be doing very well. So Boulder Valley School District does have the highest achievement gap in the state of Colorado, which means uh, minority and um, poor kids perform with, have the highest gap between um, just the normal white middle class kids. It's, in, in it's the haves and the haves not, have mm -hmm. nots. Uh, a lot of these kids could be helped by, by the school. The other part that amazes me is what you're doing by saying, well, we've got the school here, we're using the same techniques and a lot of the services for this school here. One, is this coming out of some, some are you owned by some national franchise? Is this, <laughs> is, is this you know, McDonald's coming in? Is, is this corporatizing it? Or is this a state company that's doing it, a state local entity? So uh, I think Classical Academies is actually us. Um, it was me starting it. We've got another great um, parent who's also a founder of Golden View Classical Academy. Um, and Kim and I have been working with parents to help them build more schools like this. So this is homegrown. Colorado likes homegrown. They like their homegrown beer. They like their skiing. Uh, so this is another homegrown Colorado effort, and we're here to help support Colorado families with more choice. In the same way that our current governor did exactly the same thing, saying, here's a model of schools I want here, and we'll try to get it over here, and people wanted it. It's no different except that the way you teach and what you teach is different. That's exactly right. Um, again, we, we teach differently than anyone else. There's nothing like this school in Boulder. And Boulder celebrates diversity. Uh, it, it's, it's That's all they do about diversity yeah. is celebrate it. <laughs> all right, so why did they, what was the reason they denied parents and kids in their, in their school district this, this choice? So it's a number of things. It, it depends on what you read versus what, what happened. 
Um, give, me, give me what you think is the truth. So, well, I think the truth is they don't want a charter school. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I talked about, I think there's just inherent conflict of interest in having local school districts be the exclusive gatekeepers to their own competition coming right. in. And I think that's what we've seen. We've seen that in a number of districts as well. It, and Boulder hasn't had a charter application in 10 years. Uh, it's charter- Excuse me? Uh, 10 have, years? 10 years. So there isn't a lot of institutional knowledge of how do you work with a new charter applicant and, and, or how do you support more parent choice outside of the district offerings right. in Boulder. But what I loved about this was also, uh, we're going, less than a minute here, they had the local NAACP come up and say, oh, this, this is, uh, they're not welcoming the people of color. Interesting that the NAACP gets money from the NEA, who doesn't like charter schools. But again, you take all creeds, colors. You cannot discriminate, can you? No, and it's not just that. Before we even, Boulder even brought it up, uh, serving kids who are educationally disadvantaged is what they like to say. We had actually already created a lottery um, preference for kids um, to be able to have a higher chance of getting in our schools. All right, good luck in front of the state board. Maybe they'll let a little intellectual diversity out in Boulder. Derek, thank you. Check that out. Check out the Independence Institute at thinkfreedom.org. Listen for me on KL Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. See you next week.